And I think in our next game, we will certainly re-architect uh, things. Now that I know more about the pipeline the, for publishing Godot uh, apps, I think I'm definitely going to yeah create maybe a boilerplate. And I'll probably push that up uh, to GitHub as well, make that free and open source. Uh, so there's certain things, uh, for instance, <coughs> having some PSD files ready for uh, screenshot formats, icon formats, um, all the stuff you need to like actually publish things in the app stores. Uh, a lot of those templates can just be uh, added. Okay, so now we've got this root ignore, let's have a look. Is it, oh, it's still importing the damn thing. Why on earth? Maybe if we, uh, maybe if we quit the editor and then it's because it, I, I'm assuming it might be, uh, loading the ignore file when it boots instead of constantly loading it before importing. That's my assumption. I might be very wrong. Oh, I love that new icon now. It's, it's much better. <laughs> I got to figure out how to bring more pink into the game. Okay, so that didn't re-import, did it? Interesting. Okay, let's make a note of that. Uh, so, um, Godot ignore dot gd ignore needs <laughs> needs to uh, restart the engine before changes are picked up. Pink confetti explosions, you, you make that joke, but I kind of like the idea of pink conf confetti explosions. Like every time someone wins, pink confetti. Why not? And then we can combine my love of pink with your love of explosions and... <laughs> okay, so we've now uh, cleaned up our tree and uh, let's have a look at what our to-do list was. So we have done that, done that. So this is something I think I've seen people when they're getting used to the game. Um, it's a little bit too easy to run into the walls. So I was thinking about this and I thought, hmm, there is a way we can make this better for the player. Uh, well, better for the, the sort of player that continually runs into walls at least. Uh, now, where is this animation coming from? Let's reset our animation, shall we? Okay, here we go. Yep. Not just you, actually. <laughs> okay. So what I was thinking, right, is we could cast a ray in front of the player, out of the player's nose, right? And if its nose is uh, going to be colliding with a part of the environment, we can essentially just put a reverse thrust on the player. And that will mean that when you, uh, when you come close to a wall, it'll sort of like automatically reverse you out of the wall. And I think that will, because there's no forward and back button, I think that will make a big difference. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add a ray cast 2D and we're going to plonk it right in the middle of the player and we're going to only worry about environment collisions, right? And I think we'll project that about a hundred, no, not a hundred, that's way too much. 
Jesus, Seb, way too much. What are you thinking? So how, how close do you think we could we should realistically be able to get to the environment straight ahead before we start screwing with the player? Because we don't want to get in their way. Maybe 20? Oh, chill jazz. What What is this? This is great. Okay, so what we're going to call this is... Um, uh, idiot detector? No. That just slightly less than the square blocks off the wall. Less than a square block. Yeah, okay, I think that's probably correct, right? So what we'll call this, uh, we'll just call this the wall detector. Okay, and the square blocks are 16 pixels, so let's just say like 15 pixels. Uh, and here, let's jump into the player script. Wow, this player directory needs some love. In fact, this, this class needs some love as well. I think if, um, if we get enough interest, public interest in the game and, and we start we do a, a second version, like a V2, then I'll do a full refactor and I'll probably stream that refactor, maybe create a YouTube video or something out of it and just say like, how to make your Godot code not shit. All right, so I guess what we want to hook into, well, first of all, we need a, a reference to our uh, our wall detector. So let's grab an on ready variable and call this wall detector. Okay, and we can set that equal to dollar sign wall detector. Okay. And when we're integrating forces, uh, I guess what we should do. Mm. So we could work out the thrust amount in this thrust for. So basically what happens is we work out the thrust for any given engine using this The reason why your cat eats so much is he doesn't trust your um, your economic stability as a man, and so he's he's just putting on as much weight as he can for the inevitable uh, bankruptcy that he sees ahead. He's smart, man. Cats, they know. He's saving it. He's saving it up for the hard times ahead. Exactly. He he knows. He knows what's happening. He's got he's he's got ac access to your bank account and he's he's keeping an eye. Trust me. Us cats. We know what's going on. Okay, so what I'm going to say, right, is if the engine if the engine is <laughs> okay, so what, what could we do here? We could say that like, if the engines are off and the ray is colliding, we could reverse, right? That's the, that's the gentlest version of this. So as soon as you let go of the engines, it'll push you backwards. And that's definitely not going to screw with most people's playstyle. So if we say... Oh, that's quite interesting here, actually. 
So because we calculate this per engine, let's say you're running towards a wall, right? And you need to make a, a really quick turn. Then if, you're, if you've only got one engine on and you're facing the environment, your other engine will, will actually automatically turn on reverse and you'll actually spin out of the wall quicker than you would have otherwise. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let's have a look. So we could say if wall detector dot is colliding, right? Then return uh, So if it's not colliding, let's just return a nice fat zero. Uh, otherwise, what should we do? So we could get, we could reverse the engine by a flat amount, but I think it will be more interesting to grab uh, get collider. Uh, dot dot position, I guess. And can we do like distance too? Okay, well, let's just put a breakpoint here and then figure it out. Uh, if we get the collider and say bar collider equals. Okay. Okay, so interesting. That's not triggering. Why is that not triggering? So if the wall, t oh, we forgot to turn the raycast on. There we go. Now we've got our breakpoint, and let's have a look at our collider. Um, I definitely could. Yeah, I think we, we will probably do uh, that sort of refactor um, in a bit. I, I don't. I don't want to. I want. I, I want the code to be as like. I suppose as as readable and clear as possible before I tr try and optimize the the math. Wait. So let me remind myself how this uh, the Raycast two D Godot Raycast. Actually, let's just jump into the official docs. Yeah, you're definitely right. That's um, doing it that way will be uh, much more performant. You can cast the boolean to an integer and then I would. <laughs> yeah, so like that that's definitely a, a way to uh, increase performance if we do it that way. Okay, cast to play with areas, play with body. Uh, okay. Get collision point, that's what we want. So, and what happens if returns the normal get collision point? Oh, this is 